Good evening, Fernwood. It is your reminiscent reprobate Neil, and it's time for us to go retro with another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We're watching episode 313 from June 15th, 1977. Yesterday left me with chills, so let's take a look. We started at Casa de Shumway, where George had jury-rigged some power so that he could do a photo shoot with Bug Massacre Slattery. Kathy was along for eye candy, but it turns out that she has some side pains ever since she's been selling sandwiches. After Mac and Kathy leave, George gets a visit from a powerful-looking woman named Svetlana Dobrovolich. Svetlana is looking to book Mac Slattery for a match, a wrestling match against herself and when George protests that Mac would probably kill her Svetlana shows exactly how formidable she is. Next door at the Hartmans Mary is doing some housework as Heather says that she's bored of Fernwood and wants to move to Las Vegas to become a stripper. Mary discourages this idea saying that strippers probably get more colds than anybody else. Then Tom comes in with a bunch of mail that he doesn't feel like looking at. Mary serves him some breakfast and notices that there is a letter inviting them to their 16th annual high school reunion. And not only that, that the reunion actually needs a venue. And Tom agrees to Mary volunteering their home for the event. However, after Tom leaves for work, Mary reads a postcard from Dennis saying, Wish you were here. Then over at the Jeter residence, Merle vents to Wanda about still having Adeline and Mickey Moe involved in the campaign. But Wanda points out that Mickey Moe is their biggest fundraising asset. Merle confirms with Buzz and Amanda that Mickey Moe is still going to be on the campaign trail for them as Mickey Moe comes out with a suitcase because he doesn't feel loved. Merle and Wanda tell Mickey Moe that he is still welcome there and Mickey Moe is thrilled to be included. Over at the Capri Lounge, Martha is doing some bar prep work as Kathy comes in with her sandwich cart complaining how tired she is and asking for a Coke. Martha serves a customer who has a very familiar face and then starts screaming. And when Kathy sees that face, she starts screaming too. The man stands up to calm them down and Kathy asks if this is Garth Gimble, who we know died last Christmas. But no, this is Garth's twin brother, Barth a showman who is down on his luck. Barth does not seem to realize that his brother Garth is dead, and as he plucks away at the 88, Kathy has more pains in her side. We then cut away to George, who is sitting with Mary, who has just told him that Dennis Foley has asked her to run away with him. George asks Mary if Dennis makes her more happy than Tom, and Mary says yes, he does. Mary is still looking for someone to give her permission to run off to Dennis, and George doesn't give that, but he does say that whatever decision Mary makes, he will stand with her. And everyone, the emotions have been really stirred up lately, and I expect that they're going to start spinning faster, so let's do this. <laughs> Child, a creature from the wild, destroying every single place he'd go and getting everybody riled. And he ate him off ball, which made him kind of mild. But now he's where he can't be reached, no matter how hard he died. He is a wild child. Shoot. Honey, honey, you have got to stop fussing on Johnny Doe. You just gotta. I know, sweetheart, I know. I lost a whole huge chunk out of my heart, too, but life goes on. I know, Charlie, I know it does. It's just that I can't do nothing around this house without being reminded of the little tack. I mean, okay, just for instance, you put them things down on the coffee table. Now, immediately what pops into my mind is him just sitting there all cute and cuddlyable and angel-like, just gnawing on a ham hock bone and drooling kind of like a little fountain in the park. 
Honey, I know, I know you lost a child, sweetheart. I did too. But you got something to take the place of that lost child, honey. You got your music. There you go again, Charlie. Just sitting here singing. I couldn't do it without the little sweet, beautiful howling along with me. Honey, you got to work harder is what you got to do. You got to work harder on Baby Baby Boy. That's going to be a smash. When the people hear the misery in that song, honey, they're just going to want to lie down and die. When as a performer, that ought to make you feel much better. Oh, Lord, what's that? This hour of the day? Wait a minute here. I can't let them see me in this. There we go. Who is it, Charlotte? Is it Johnny Dump? Pardon the uh, interruption. Barth Gimble? Barth? Gimble. Yeah, G Garth's twin brother. Well, you do, you do bear him some resemblance, I'll say that. Yeah. I was just wondering, did, did he leave a forwarding address of any sort? Well, hon, um, far be it from us to judge, you know. Uh, I, I'm Loretta Haggers. This is Charlie Haggers, my sure. husband. Hi. Nice to hey, meet you. Same here. Listen, this open door is going to get kind of drafty. Why don't I just shut up while we talk, okay? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. I, I don't know what else we have to tell you. Well, for starters, you might give me the uh, recipe to this divine concoction over here. What on earth is this? Uh, well, let's see. We've got toast there, and then coffee, and then these are uh, grits. Tantalizing aroma. You must have quite a gift in the kitchen, huh? <laughs> sure. Thank you an awful lot. But actually, it's Charlie here who's gifted. Uh, I, we probably have quite a lot back there. You can just okay. have some if you want. Mm. Intriguing flavor. How do you make it? Uh, you just uh, open the package and dump it in hot water. I mean, that's the instant kind. <laughs> we'll never underestimate prepackaged food, huh? Uh, listen, you can just go ahead and finish that if you want to, because uh, this one here is Charlie's, and I, I really kind of lost Don't. my... Ah, uh, no thank you. <laughs> I kind of lost my appetite, you know, since this dearly beloved son of mine got lost. There's so much tragedy in the world, huh? be a good idea for a TV show, wouldn't it? Sort of like, um, boy, boy, I've lost my boy. You like that? You know, I could iron out the rough edges on that thing in no time since I get out of this hectic schedule of mine. Well, are you in show business? Did you say in show business? Yeah. No, I am show business. The biggest star in all of Miami. Really? Loretta's been on TV, you know. I mean, you could maybe you could use her in her, your show, huh? Oh, that's great news. <laughs> but see, I'm between shows right now. But you know something? The minute I came up to the door there, I knew that we were going to be simpatico. It's just something, I don't know, show folk have a certain uh, vibe, I guess is the word I'm looking for. That's why we're getting down so quick, you dig? Yeah. Hey, picture this, if you will, in your mind's eye. Loretta Hager's live. No, no, scratch that. It should be... Um, the Loretta Hager's All-Star Spectacular. You like that? Wouldn't that be great, huh? <laughs> what do you do, anyway? She's a superstar singer. Uh, that, that was, of course, before this heart-wrenching loss that I got, which kind of, you know, just plumb wrenched the music out of my throat just temporarily. Listen, hey, tell me about suffering. Uh, you see me over here looking on top of the world, sure, but... Do I know pain? You don't think I know pain? Well, wrong oh, folks. <laughs> That's why I wanted to, uh, I said wanted, I needed to come here to town and see Garth. That boy could always put a genuine smile across my face. What a sense of humor, huh? Ah, uh, he sure did have a way about him, didn't he? In had several ways. <clears throat> he was funny, smart as a whip, generous. When do you leave town, anyway? Charlie, I'm not going to tell him. Don't look at me. But, you know, I have um, a little bit of a problem, and that is I was kind of counting on Garth's hospitality to help me out in the next few days, especially uh, being locked out of the bite of <laughs> Visualize this. This is so nuts. Um, those hicks down there at the bite of acted like they had never even seen plastic before. You know, credit cards? Oh, yeah, well, we do have... Those are a couple of terrible hicks down at the bite of yeah. yeah. You bet. Uh, so, uh... What are you going to do then? I'll be fine. I'm just going to curl up on a park bench somewhere and cover myself up with my 8x10 glossies and keep warm. You, well, 
You know, if Loretta and I hadn't been having so many problems recently, you could stay with us, but we... As I said, I've had my share of suffering. So, so I can't find my brother, and I have no place to go. But uh, I'll be all right. It's just all experiences, and they add up to a beautiful autobiography. You know, maybe I can sell the film rights to a future film on it if I play my cards right. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's out in the cold for me. Um... Well, no, wait, wait, just a minute. We have a guest room, you know, I mean, a day or two or something like that. You could stay with us if you want. Mmm, guest room, no. No, I'm funny that way. I, guest rooms are kind of musty and cramped, and they're not really good for a, for a suicidal. You, you wouldn't, you don't have to stay in the room. I mean, you could use the rest of the house, yeah. I guess. If you insist, I can. Okay. Which way is the guest room? Uh... It's right uh, through that door and up the stairs, right ahead of you. Yeah, just through the door. Thank you, folks. Stairs. See you later. Oh, my gosh, Charlie. Somebody is going to have to tell him. Poor fella. Go. You folks got any crazy glue for that lamp? Which lamp is that? That really cheap-looking one. down here. Hello. It's very nice you talk to me. It's nice to have friends in strange country. Yeah. Well, uh, cheers. It's with me nothing to cheer about. What's the trouble? Trouble? Is everything trouble. Everything tragedy. All my family tragedy in Russia. After I escape, they put my brother in salt mine. Salt mine? Was, that's really rough. It's only beginning. My father has leprosy. Leprosy? Big leprosy, which means my mother take care of farm alone. Well, listen, uh, she must be a pretty strong old woman then, huh? Was strong. Now all over body is arthritis and rheumatism. <laughs> well, at least you're taking it well. It's only beginning. Cousin Boris! <laughs> well, Boris. Listen, it, it sounds to me like your family has had a, a rough run of luck here, but well, look on the bright side. I mean, things are going to look up now. I mean, you're in the United States of America here. I mean, land of opportunity. You say nice things. I think I am liking you. Well, I'm liking you, too. I gotta watch out for that. What does this mean, watch out? Well, it's just that uh, every time that I get involved with a woman, I tend to get my heart smashed. It's also smashed my heart, too. Really? When I escape from Russia, I come on the potato boat with fiancé. So where's your fancy now? I don't know. He hide on boat under potatoes. He's unloaded with potatoes. He's no more fiancé. He's mashed potatoes. <laughs> now, I work hard, make money, maybe get the rest of family out of Russia. Well, in there now, what, uh, what line of work are you in? It's embarrassing. It's not pretty work. No like to tell. I'm mean, always saying it don't matter what you do, you know. It's what you are. I'll tell you one thing, you're a pretty little old thing. I no care what you do, too. You nice. Nice ain't nothing if you can't help the ones you care about. You help? I no more cry in my heart because you are a friend. Yeah, but you still got just a smidge of a tear there on your cheek, don't you? Message from heart travels slowly. Ah, well, I can hardly wait to hear you uh, ah, laugh. I, mm, 
Bitch, you got a real pretty laugh there, don't you? Don't you worry. Heart already laughing. <laughs> now, I wonder who this is from. I'll be wearing a white carnation on my lapel and my heart on my sleeve until Friday, darling. All my love, Dennis. Oh, Dennis, you're exhausting me. said you're a good friend of my brother's family? Uh, yes, I was. I don't want to talk about that. Oh, you're the shy type, huh? <laughs> I could tell. Yeah, I uh, read body language. I studied it for three years. You into body language? Probably not. Okay. I came to Fernwood to uh, look for Garth, and he seems to just have disappeared into thin air. Well, that's a, a very good way to put it. Uh, you know, my husband, Tom... Oh, you that... and your husband are still talking. That's good. Why? what'd you hear? Uh, uh, Loretta just said that uh, maybe you and Tom were headed for a split. Uh, Tom, uh, I want you to meet Barth. This is Garth Gimble's uh, brother. This is my uh, husband, uh, Tom Hartman. Hi, Barth. Hi, Tom. Hi, there. Hi, Tom. So this is the soon-to-be-estranged husband. What, what, what are you talking about? Oh, Mike, you know what? You look exactly like Garth Gimble. I mean, you could be his twin brother, you know that? <laughs> like, what do you mean, estranged husband, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure you probably don't want to have strange men standing in your kitchen talking about your divorce with your wife, but no problem. Okay. Although I think I maybe could uh, shed a little light on maybe exactly where the two of you went wrong, but nobody's asking me. Right? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? He's got some joke of this guy, right? Huh? There's nothing wrong with, with me and my wife. I mean, hell, we're, we're getting along terrific. Are you kidding? Marrying my me? We get along just fine. I'll tell you that. We just, there's no... Foley? Oh, it's just a flower, Tom. I mean, you can't just go worry about every little flower. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm really sorry you had to see that. See, this, this, is, this is great. This is really healthy, the way you're getting it all out. That's great. Hey, just do me a favor. Get the hell out of here. Come on, come on. Oh, see yourself Tom, out. Come on. please don't do that. It's bad enough. I mean, think how he's going to feel after he hears about the tragedy. Tragedy? What tragedy? Garth? He doesn't know about Garth? This uh, suspense is kind of exciting, isn't it? Oh, well, the story is so exciting. Yeah, I mean, when you consider the beatings and the fighting and, and of course, the closet. I mean, it probably otherwise would have been no big deal at all, except yeah. for the fact yeah, that... Yeah, as it was, uh, Garth... Uh, uh, stabbed himself with his very own Christmas tree, you know, to death. Yeah. You're kidding me. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, I'm uh, no good at jokes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I don't know what to say. Um, forgive me, okay? I have to leave. I, oh, oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, that, that poor guy. I, 
I really feel badly for him. Mary, what do you have to, you know, pick on that poor guy for him and bring him into our little problems, you know? I mean, that's... Oh, sweetheart, we're alone, Mm-hmm. Okay, I got a grip on myself. Now let's talk about you two. <laughs> You've got to act very vicious, Matt. You know, grunt and groan and growl. Uh, 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 that intimidates uh, your opponent. Uh, more, more. Uh, uh, How's that? That's better. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now uh, take, take his arm there and... Um, Bend it back there and twist it. Twist it. Oh! Oh! What are you yelling about? Oh, I just feel for that poor helpless dummy. Yeah, I know what Ooh. you mean. Listen, uh, George didn't happen to mention you who it was that I was going to wrestle, did he? No, he didn't tell anyone. He says that it is psychology. You know, the less you know about your opponent, the less you will worry. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Get the jump rope now. All right. All right, here now. Life and enthusiasm. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait. All right. Uh, no. Speed. Oh, more. What's more? Speed, speed, faster. Faster, faster, faster. Double dutch down. Oh. I guess, uh, I guess I better get on the road to Dayton there. Are you leaving because I came in? Oh, no, no, listen. Uh, I mean, I hardly even know you. Excuse me. Uh, bye, Matt. See you tomorrow, Martha. Uh-huh. Ma, listen, uh, I really have to talk to you. I need, uh, oh, did I say good morning, Ma? Uh, no, I don't think so. Good morning, Ma. Uh, good morning, Mary. Uh, Ma, I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy trying to make a decision here. Well, what about? Oh, well. Oh, but, Grandpa! Uh, how are things with you and, and Barbie at the Bada Wee Motel? Oh, um, I, I've come to pick up my summer clothes. Oh, oh, Grandpa, please, please don't go. Please wait. Please wait. I really need your advice. Please stay. Good advice or bad? Um, g- good advice, I hope. Oh, Mary, that's asking a lot. I think we'd all better sit down. Dennis Foley wants me to run away with him. Mary, didn't Tom promise you a trash compactor? That's right, he did. Well, then I don't see what the problem is. I think I love Dennis. Oh. Oh, Will Dennis throw a trash compactor into the deal? Uh, On a policeman's salary? I don't think he can. Please, you really have to help me with what to do now. I really know what to do. This is just the most serious decision I've ever had to make in my life. Uh, But, Mary, if I tell you what to do, you're going to wind up hating me. And I do not think it's very fair. I didn't ask you when I left my husband. That's true. I'm sorry, Ma. I really am. I'm sorry for placing such a burden on you. Uh, Oh, well, that's all right. Now, if there's anything else you want to know, you know, about recipes or eliminating nasty odors, anything. Thanks, Ma. You're welcome. Grandpa, now I don't even know what to do about asking about what to do. He loves you, this falling character? Yes, he does. And, and you love him? I think I do. Oh, now, who, who is he? Uh, the one with the gun? Yes, yeah, the policeman. It's a silly idea, isn't it? It sure is. Yeah. Do it, Mary. What? Do the silly thing. Take the dream. And leave Tom? Well, you don't want to take him with you, do you? Grandpa, are you sure of what you're saying? Well, what difference does it make? Nobody listens anyway. I say, do the silly thing. All these serious people don't seem to be doing themselves any good. So do it. 
It's a silly thing. So, Mary finally has someone who says to do the thing. We still have a couple of days until Friday, so who knows what's going to happen between now and then. So let's just recap this episode. We start with the Haggers with Loretta trying to come up with a new song for Johnny Doe. And Charlie feels pain just like Loretta over his loss, his absence. But Loretta is finding it difficult to tune into the music that she used to. You know, she used to use music to filter her pain through, but apparently this loss is drowning her. They get a visit from that familiar face that we've been seeing all week long, and they get to meet Barth Gimble, who finagles away into a free dinner and a place to stay because the Haggers have a guest room. He mentions being suicidal, and I don't know if that's going to be a storyline that's touched on or just because he's in dire straits. We've seen suicide addressed in this show a bit, so I don't know. I don't know what to expect here. But for now, offering Barth the space means that he's stable, more stable than he has been. So I suppose that putting up with Barth is for now Loretta and Charlie's ordeal. We then jump over to the Capri Lounge where Mac notices a crying Svetlana Dobrovolic. They get to know each other in a friendly way. Mac offers an ear to Svetlana who tells him her whole story. And I have to remember that the 1970s was pretty deep into the Cold War. America and Russia were not generally on friendly terms at this point perhaps friendlier than the 60s, but things were still pretty nuts. And Svetlana doesn't mention what her job is. We know as audience members, especially if we were there yesterday, that she is a wrestler who has challenged Bug Massacre Slattery to a match, but neither she nor Mac seem to realize what's in store for them, that they are going to be facing off in the ring. And they seem to be hitting it off in some kind of romantic way, since Mac seems attracted to her, though maybe a little guarded because of the various breakups we've seen him have to deal with over the course of his time on the series. And then Mary in the kitchen getting a little gift from Dennis out in Niagara Falls. It's a flower that she tosses right in the trash. She's feeling crowded by him at this instant. And then she gets a visit from that familiar face. And it's pretty quickly clarified for Mary that Barth is related to Garth and not Garth himself. I feel like so many people see Garth and it's like seeing a ghost not to mention the stories that are attached to him. Tom comes home and since Barth is privy to the gossip from Loretta, he knows that Mary and Tom's relationship is in jeopardy and seems to stoke that fire a little bit, maybe just to see them react. Tom notices the flower in the trash and that is a little bit more fuel for the fire that Tom and Mary's relationship is breaking up in the perception of those around them. Tom doesn't realize that it's happening and Mary, we know, is very clearly questioning whether it's going to happen. And of course, that scene ends with Barth stepping back in to comment on the Hartman marriage. And then we are at the Shumways with Martha standing in as coach for Bug Massacre Slattery as he practices on a dummy. That dummy reminded me of the mummy woman that was there early in season two, which I'm sure that wasn't intended, but the fact that it was wrapped up in bandages and had a fake head on it made me think, oh, mummy woman, whatever happened to her? Mac does not realize who he is facing in the match this week. I expect that's going to be Friday. Some big things may be happening in a couple days. And that's interrupted when Mary comes in looking for advice from Martha and Grandpa Larkin. And 
Mary is still looking for that permission that she was trying to get from George. She was trying to get from Dr. Joyce Brothers. She's been looking for someone to tell her she should go meet Dennis and run away with him. Martha isn't willing to do that. She leaves the room and then Grandpa Larkin investigates the situation a little more closely and says Mary should do the silly thing and go off and chase her love. And as I said earlier, I don't know what Mary is going to do. I expect that, you know, she's going to meet Dennis on Friday. I don't know what will happen between now and then, and I don't know what happens after that. I expect she's going to meet him and figure this out, but clearly she has deep, deep love for Dennis that is overtaking her relationship with Tom, her family relationship with Heather, for instance. She hasn't talked to Heather about this, but there's some stuff that still needs to be settled, and I don't know how it will be or if it will be. So now, everyone, we're going to address the question of the week that I asked back in January, and that was... What were your favorite surprise moments on this series? Tube Socks Brigade comes with this. It's a toss up between Coach Fetter's in Mary Soup or Garth Gimble and the Aluminum. Of course, I blocked out a spoiler before this episode without realizing that it was verbally mentioned what happened to Garth. So there we are. Let's go on to the second part. Tube Socks Brigade continues. I watched the DVD set years back and Garth was him after all the crap he dished out to his wife. Just didn't know how he or how that abuse would end. Lo and behold, that was his Jimmy Joe Jeter was shocking too. No. So we have a few different moments mentioned here. We start with Coach Fetters and that specific event was covered in a rerun season episode 43. I don't feel like we've talked much about Coach Fetters himself who seemed to be in the early series Tom's father figure that seemed to have instilled some sense of sex negativity in Tom. Coach Fetters was a fairly conservative dude who didn't have time for people to talk about sex and in general he was pretty crabby paired along with Blanche who we discussed last week and there's still some things to be said about the Fetters family but you know I just recommend for now watching episode 43 and 44 like I suggested last week then we bring up Garth Gimble who was the abusive husband of Patty Gimble we there are plenty of episodes to catch us up on his story we meet Patty Gimbel in the first episode of season two and the Gimbel family story continues until well into January of 1977. And of course that post ended with a mention of Jimmy Joe Jeter and maybe you've seen that episode which I suggested yesterday. So many, so many surprises. I feel like there's always so much to talk about in this series so thank you so much for watching with me. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, impressions in the comments. Thank you so much for going retro, and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.